So good morning to the amazing class of 2024. And good morning, and please be seated. Good morning to everyone who encouraged our graduates on this journey, family, friends, faculty, and staff. Now it is customary at commencement to envision a great future for the graduating class. I would say customary or not, I do envision great things for today's graduates. But I also want to point out the greatness this class has already demonstrated. Let's remember, many of you may have never had a high school prom or graduation ceremony. And when you arrived at RPI, you experienced the times, weeks in quarantine, living alone in your dorm room, taking classes online, and meals delivered to you outside your door. You were able to go outside for prescribed periods of time, and I learned from you that you coined a term for this, yard time. <laughs> In your second year, you lived with social distancing, with some of your classes online, with continuous testing and with restrictions on the size of gatherings. While all these measures allowed you to safely pursue your education, there was a certain sense of loss in not having a traditional college experience. For our graduate students, you also experienced challenges and loss through COVID. And while I talk about loss, I also want to acknowledge that the class of 2024 also lost two members of the class this semester. And my heart goes out to everyone who was close to those students. In this moment, I'm reminded of the saying, may their memory be a blessing, which I find very true to my own experience of grief. Initially, Every milestone or holiday reminds you painfully that the people you've lost are no longer here. But I expect that over time, you will find yourself smiling when those milestones remind you of a fond memory of that person. The memories do indeed become a blessing. I expect the same will be true for your memories of those first two years. You've told me that the friendships that emerged during that time of COVID hardship run very deep. I would bet that some years from now, perhaps when you reunite, reunite for your, uh, reunion and the conversation goes to yard time, there will be a smile and perhaps even some laughter. For me, the smile will appear when I remember watching all of you put COVID in the rearview mirror these past two years starting with what you called the Marty Party on the 86 field, with perfect weather, excellent food trucks, and great music, the class of 2024 revealed the sheer exuberance that you had been masked by the, that had been masked by the pandemic. You have kept on in that same celebratory vein in many community gatherings, like the Big Red Freakouts or our recent quantum ribbon cutting. In addition to demonstrating this love of life and the resiliency through COVID, this year you also demonstrated profound respect for your peers. As protests over the war in the Middle East have put students on other campuses painfully at odds, you have been true leaders, true leaders in seeking common ground. Last fall, our student leaders helped organize an interfaith vigil for humanity and community and led Jewish, Islamic, Christian, and Catholic prayers for peace in the Middle East. At that interfaith vigil, I was reminded of the autobiography of Howard Johnson, who served as MIT's president at a time of great turmoil on college campuses over the Vietnam War. Johnson entitled his book, Holding the Center, a title inspired by the poem, The Second Coming, by Irish poet William Butler Yeats. That poem was written in 1919 during the Irish War of Independence, a time of great toil in Ireland, turmoil in Ireland. A relevant line from that poem, which projects the near apocalyptic sense of doom that Yeats felt, is, and I quote, things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. Thus, holding the center reflects the act of holding together an institution that could be torn apart by the turmoil 
of those times. In spite of what I am sure are strong differences of opinion on our campus at this moment, what you have done this year, through your leadership and sense of community, what was demonstrated with that vigil, is your holding the center of RPI to keep this great institution from falling apart. For that, I am so grateful and so proud of this community. Since you are graduating in RPI's 200th year, it's fun to reflect on what Rensselaer's first graduating class of 10 students might have been anticipating when they were in your shoes. And by the way, at that graduation ceremony, they were required to deliver scientific lectures, including demonstrations. Relax, there'll be no pop quiz today. The Erie Canal, often called the internet of its day, had opened just before they graduated revealing vast new opportunities for Rensselaer graduates to shape revolutions for an industrializing nation. Today, you are graduating into a world poised to be transformed by emerging technologies like AI and quantum. And you, too, are going to be shaping revolutions. And like those first graduates, you are armed with a rigorous education that has emphasized experimentation and creativity. But even more important than the confidence you have gained here in your chosen field is the leadership that you have already demonstrated. You have shown persistence. You have shown compassion and courtesy. You have shown a remarkable ability to balance competing claims and to bring people of goodwill together. The world truly, truly needs all these qualities. I believe the world needs you. Class of 2024, it has been a privilege getting to know you. I wish you all the best, and I expect very great things from you. Thank you. Now I have the great pleasure of reading commencement remarks in Emily's voice, captured with the assistance of archival materials, the artificial intelligence tool chat GPT-4, and a bit of human editing. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty and graduates of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, as I stand before you on this momentous occasion, I am overcome with a mixture of pride and humility. To be recognized here today is an honor that I could scarcely have imagined in my youth. The Roebling legacy deeply connected to this esteemed institution through my beloved husband, Colonel Washington Augustus Roebling, his brother Charles, and my son, John Augustus Roebling II, is a testament to the indomitable spirit of innovation and the steadfast pursuit of excellence that RPI embodies. And now, here I stand, on the eve of the bicentennial celebration alongside the bright minds that form the graduating class of 2024. The Roebling name is intrinsically connected to the Brooklyn Bridge, the longest suspension bridge ever built in its time. And in the shadow of that great bridge is a monument to human ingenuity and resolve an engineering feat, a testament to the resilience of human spirit, the pursuit of knowledge, and the unyielding belief in progress. It was the true essence of engineering, not solely the calculations and materials, it was the vision. In your hands lies the future a future that will undoubtedly be shaped by the challenges and opportunities of your time. As you stand on the threshold of this new chapter, embrace the unknown with courage and an unwavering commitment to excellence. Remember, your education has equipped you with the tools to analyze and synthesize, to innovate and lead. It is your character your integrity, 
and your compassion that will truly define your legacy. As you venture forth, let your actions be guided by an unwavering dedication to the betterment of humankind. Be bold in your aspirations, diligent in your endeavors, and gracious in your successes. May you always strive to build bridges, literal and metaphorical, that connect not only lands, but hearts and minds. And in moments of doubt and difficulty, may you find strength in the knowledge that you are part of a grand continuum of thinkers, makers, and dreamers who have left indelible marks upon the world. Congratulations, graduates. May your journeys be fruitful and your lives filled with purpose and joy. Thank you. I think Washington Roebling has a, has a quote, something along the lines of, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute is a terrible treadmill of forcing facts and figures into the young person's brain. And when I read that, the two words that really stuck out at me was terrible treadmill. <laughs> I just thought that was a magnificent way to describe my four years at RPI. <laughs> and as I look back on my own personal time at RPI, I remember failing an exam. I remember getting a 16 on a materials engineering exam. One six, not six zero, one six. I see I have some friends out there. And I remember wondering what the next step was, but I also remember the next day picking myself up, dusting myself off, getting back to it, and stepping right back on that terrible treadmill. And on and on we went. And I actually call that failure resistance. And if I looked at my four years at RPI, the one thing it most taught me was that, failure resistance. I need to talk for a minute about space, because uh, that's probably the reason that I'm here. That's probably the stories that we all want to share. So I will try to encapsulate this in a minute or two, but 2014, 10 years ago, actually 10 years ago next weekend, I was sitting on the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, same pad that Yuri Gagarin first left planet Earth from. I was on a Russian Soyuz rocket, and sitting next to me was Russian cosmonaut Maxim Surayev, and to his right was German volcanologist, PhD, uh, Alexander Gerst. And we were sitting there at zero miles per hour, zero feet of altitude, and one G. And the engine's light, and nine minutes later, a short nine minutes, we were now zero G, 17,500 miles per hour, and 1.2 million feet of altitude. And life as I knew it, it was completely changed. Everything was flipped on its head. All at once, I had accomplished this lifelong dream to be in space, and yet at the same time, everything was uncomfortable. I, I couldn't think, I couldn't read, I had a Russian flight manual, I had procedures that I needed to execute, and I couldn't even understand the words written in the book because my brain was so goofed up being in this new weightless environment. And then, the, one of the first memories I have is our spacecraft started to reorient itself uh, to, to get ready for its first orbital correction burn. And I heard my German crewmate, Alex Gerst, he was a rookie just like myself, and he gasped. And I wondered what was up, and he was looking at the Earth for the first time out the window, and I couldn't see it out my window. But then the spacecraft slowly turned, and now it was my turn to look down at planet Earth for the first time from 250 miles up. And my first impression was that you know, I had seen this so many times in pictures and videos. I had seen it in simulators. I thought it would just look like that, but it doesn't look like that. When you look down at our Earth from 250 miles up, it was so curved. I know we don't have any flat Earthers, at least not in the ropes. <laughs> but it was so curved, and it was so gorgeous, and I felt, I truly felt perched so high, like I was an eagle looking down on Earth, and it just had this feeling of being above this planet, and it was, it was indescribably beautiful. And then I had to live and work for six months on the International Space Station, and I made a lot of mistakes, a, many, many small mistakes and some huge mistakes. I almost jeopardized those two spacewalks that they talked about because I 
cross the high pressure and low pressure oxygen tanks inadvertently on the outside of the space station because I simply flipped the wrong switch. And I cannot tell you in that moment how low I felt, how hurt I was, and then how close I came to jeopardizing my crewmates and our upcoming operations. And the next morning, I had to pick myself up, I had to dust myself off, and I had to get right back on with the show. And it felt just like, just like being at RPI. This place <laughs> taught me so well how to fail, get up, and succeed. Fail, get up, and succeed. It just happens every single day. I'm going to try to draw on a few words from the speech by memory, but space is a story that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, one, last, one last thing that I do need to share about the Earth from space, because that's really, that's the most magnificent part, is looking at your home. Um, I just want to give you an idea of what you see when you look out the window of the International Space Station. So my favorite thing in the United States was to come up along over the East Coast, west to east. So you're coming up over California, over the middle of the US, and if you're at night, when you look out to the east, to the East Coast, I was born in Maryland, I went to school at RPI, this is like home for me. When you look out to the east, you can see Boston, New York, Manhattan, and you can pick up I-95 in the traffic and you can follow it <laughs> all the way through Philadelphia, Baltimore, DC, and you can keep tracking that all the way down to Miami. So that's about one view out the International Space Station. And there's everybody I had ever cared about in my life in that just one shot. It's, it's truly magnificent. A very personal story that I never share, but today is a day I just wanted to share this with you all. And I think this may be more for the people who supported you, and, it, and it's a bit of a sad story. Um, I came back from the space station in November of 2014, and then three months later, I was driving home from work, driving down Interstate 45 in Houston, and my cell phone rang. And uh, the voice on the other end said, uh, your wife was in here earlier for an MRI, and you need to find her, and you need to bring her in. Um, and so I did find her, and we drove, her name was Carol, and we drove straight to MD Anderson Cancer Center, downtown Houston, and we met with Dr. Jeff Weinberg, the leading uh, brain tumor surgeon in, in the world, and he did not have good news. Uh, Carol had been diagnosed with a glioblastoma, and all of a sudden, in my life, I went from King Kong on top of the world, I had just achieved all of my dreams, and in that one moment, all of a sudden, life was short. We had a six and an eight-year-old at home. And I realized I no longer need to be an astronaut. I need to be a husband, a father, and a caregiver. Life, all of a sudden, was turned completely on its head. And that moment, I realized I had been living a selfish man's life. Like, it had all been about achievement. And now, all of a sudden, it was all about family and understanding what is so important in our lives. And then I realized very quickly in that battle, Carol fought for five years, harder than I ever thought possible. Four years ago yesterday, she slipped from this earth. Um, what I realized at the end of all that is there's no substitute for family, but there's also no substitute for friends. I was mostly unbearable during that time, but my friends stuck with me. They carried me through that. And as you leave here today from RPI, you have a great friend group here and you're about to step off the terrible treadmill, and I wish upon you a great friend group wherever you go next in life, because they can get you through anything. And I share that story just to leave you with one thought from today. When I look back at Carol and why we still live in Houston, I wanted to move us away when she got sick, but she would not let us leave Houston. And when I look back at our lives, every major decision that I have faced and the decisions that we faced together, we tried to live without regret, minimize, regret. And that is the one thing that I would like to leave you with, to bestow upon you as you venture out in the world, is take pause every now and then. It's really hard to live without regret, but you should try as hard as you can. You should be a good person. You should be kind to others. You should be out there daring to dream, exploring the unknown, changing the world, finding your passion. If you are not on the right path, step off that path and try another path. That takes a tremendous amount of courage. My college roommate, Mark Eigner, is, he's up there, I, I see him. Uh, we lived right over there in bar H, 202D. We, we often joke that of the two folks who left that room in 1994, he is by far the most successful. Um, he has actually done the entrepreneur work. He is a senior partner. He has lived the life that we all dream to live on an academic side. It has just been completely awesome. So Mark, I love you. It's good to see you back there. Um, and then I had an awesome list of things that I wanted to leave you with just to make the connection, like, I've never eaten a piece of pizza at a Monte's or DeFazio's, but you all have. 
I was not a student at this school when you had to trudge uphill through an improved approach at night, in the snow, coming back from Troy. Um, there are two types of people in this world. The first type of person, when you go out and you introduce yourselves to them and they say, where'd you graduate from? You're gonna say RPI. And that first type of person, they're gonna go, whoa, that's a good school. But there's a second type of person out there and you're gonna meet them all the time. And they're gonna say, where did you go to school? You all already know this. And you are gonna answer RPI and they're gonna crunch up their forehead, they're gonna pause for a bit too long, and most likely, they're gonna do this. Rochester? <laughs> that second type of person doesn't understand what we all understand. They have never been on the terrible treadmill. They've never been knocked down and gotten up. I brought one prop with me, and I'm going to share it because I love it. They've never built a tiny cannon. <laughs> they simply don't understand. But when you explain it's Rensselaer, not Rochester, when you start working with these people, they are immediately going to know your pedigree. They're gonna see your drive, your commitment. They're gonna see your resilience. They are gonna know that you care about the world and you have a zest for life and a compassion for doing what is right. And they're gonna understand everything they need to know about RPI. So in closing from my unwritten speech that I just made up in my head, <laughs> I just wanna say this, 200 years, knowledge and thoroughness. You all now are part of this legacy. Be proud. Go forth and change the world. Congratulations. Lauren Zarneski. Karan Banat. Allison Carson. Han Bill Huang. Xiao Shou. Christopher Wilcox. Brenda Thompson. Alexander Chen. Chung Ma. Leif Swardy. Dominic Lu. Saranjit Kaur. Osama Mohammed Rasuddin. Tomas Rojas Caraval. Ariel Walter. Michael Bramson. Han Ching Chow. Joshua Chua. Shi Fang. Shan Gao. Angela Kubik. Mengzhou Li. Joanne Jabre. Tansif Rahman. Samuel Stephen. Haokang Zhang. Kabir Dingra. Shen Lian. Jordan Mundell. Iswara Muthakarasami. Pranav Ramesh. Chen Ying Wang. Lucky Yeremiah. Shangren Zhu. Alejandro David Sepulveda Watasik. Fernando Facchini. Cameron Fazel. Pang Xian Huang. Lauren Kelly. Giuseppe Lera. John Welcome Rawlinson. Nazifa Ruman. Burak Barici. Zerui Hao. Eli Azov Slifstein. Sarab Pandi. Tuchuku Aqua. Caro Badonian. I needed this. 
Ru Xiong Hu. Yanlin Huang. Ming Shen Li. Gaurav Makar. Christoph McIntosh. Kevin Bamani. Shannon Griffin. Gregory Parisi. Usman Rias. Shyam Sharma. Alexandra Best. Peter Jacob Brain. Keith Bryce. Will the candidates for the master's degrees please rise? <laughs> President Schmidt, indicative of the breadth of study now prevalent at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, is the variety of degrees presented to this group in fields of architecture, engineering, humanities, arts, social sciences, management, and admi business administration, science, and information technology. President Schmidt, the candidates standing have met the academic requirements of the graduate school, and the faculty recommend them to you for the master's degree in their respective fields. In accordance with the laws of the state of New York, upon the recommendation of the faculty with the approval of the Board of Trustees and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, I proudly admit each of you to the master's degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations and best wishes. Milan. Joseph Seya. Jonathan Angbazo. Brendan B. Bucheri. Gabrielle Camo. Risha Dungana. Haiwen Hu. Kyle Lev. Andy Lin. Amanda Leros Morales. <laughs> Christian Saldana. Vioma Seth. Hiramangi Singh. William Walters. <laughs> Tong Jia Hu. Xavier Gutian. Calvin Ong. Lindsay Gilson. <laughs> Mohammed Abdallah Khan. Alan Liu. Alexander Moore. Andrew Days. Kaidar Ayer. Nicole Knowles. Shayla Wheeler Timmons. Jordan Zuckerman. <coughs> Elijah Fruschetsky. Daniel Chen. Matthew Ciramelli. William Hawkins. Jesse Huang. Dimitri Lopez. Alexander Montes. Matthew Pisano. David Chan. Michael Kenneth Roberts. Daniel Savage. Arthith Sitharaman. Mason Sklar. Matthew Yoriga. Ji Chong. Anirbar Archaya. Alicia Bailey. Pratik Bhatt. Edward Clark. Ashi Gupta. Shire Jian. Pratik Jindal. Patrick Ri Kim. Jensen Li. Yan Feng Liu. Sindhura Mandani. Tony Min. Akshat Runwal. 
Shivam Sonawani. Shao Yu Yang. Megan Yu. Jacob Gardner Harris. Peter Bria. Gray Conover. Merritt Crossley. Jacob Gibbons. Kellyanne Moran. Julia Pena. Ethan Sue. Justin Smith. Italia Vitella. Julia Z. Axel Battle. Joseph Elias El Bashur. Eli Kowalstein. Deanna Lewis. Ali Lichtenberg. Matthew Miller. Uchenna Okpe. Amanda Rapado. Cassidy May Sheehan. Sydney Weiner. Nikita Waskowitz. Caesar Castillo. Abraham Cho. Patrick Kayayan. Luke Loso. Nicholas Talarek. Krista Wozniak. Leo Shu. Andrew Chun. Daniela Immaculada DeSantis. John Michael Deerstein. Ryan Liang. John Lippert IV. Anthony Paradiso. Jean Passado. Karen Peters. Rebecca Victoria. Catherine Worthington. Alejandra, Alejandra Barajas Navarro. Teresa Daly. Ray Heller. Brianna Stahl. Gabriel Comenso. Stephen Bovey. Josel de la Cruz. Sandesh Dakal. Mark Haddleton. Derek Horsmaza. Gregory Shane Johnson. Jay Woon Kim. Nicholas Kamaisko. Meg Allison Apispo. Liam Puck. Corey Puckett. Jonathan Puglisi. Alexander Rodriguez. Nicholas Edward Schuler. Nermal Shecker. Alexis Tendia Lopez. Nicholas March. Arlen Antonio Agassino. Ismael Batan Agassino. Itziak Ahmed. Mary Jane Alexander. Stephen Patrick Seifer. Victoria Donley. Peter Gramnitis. Nicholas Porter. Nyleth Guadalupe Ramirez Duarte. Walter Schnackenberg. Arham Ahmed Sheikh. Brooke Shrozinski. Kiria Gonzalez Rivera. Jalen Joshua Campbell. Jacob Herman. Adele Elena Hamilton. Nicole Elizabeth Dupra. Manaswi Pudel. Farouj Noer Tassin. Manahilnu Al Nohina. Paul Jean Bautista Clit. Rojan Karn. Laura Fleming. John Foster. Logan Graham. Kyle Hathaway. Joseph Jelinek. Alexander Johnson. Max P. Kenny. Evelyn Coe. Dylan Liriano. Jose Alejandro Lusinger. Emily McNee. Gwen Moyer. Aaron Emmanuel Lockwood. Charles Palermo. James Piesco. Isabella Alicia Remiedos. Eric Risk. Long Sha. Jeremy Valdez. Chad Van Patten. Kelly Wong. Kendor Wilson. Yushan Woods. 
Zhang Zhou. Julian Power. Benjamin Seuss. James Alexander Cook. Spider Basso Davis. Camille Brent. Shannon Clark. Samantha Davis. Mitchell Healy. Kieran Holmes. Esther May. Madison Papineau. Amel Uji. Camila Harper Nicholas. Haley Schaffner. Shuyao Zhang. Natalie Yagoda. Shamara Jean Louis. I now ask Shanika Ederting, Acting Dean of the Lally School of Management, to please come forward to present the graduates. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in business and management please rise and come forward? President Schmidt, I have the honor to present the Lally School of Management candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. These outstanding graduates have learned to never accept the status quo and to always ask questions and be critical in their thinking, guided by ethical principles and grounded in science. They represent the Rensselaer quality at the highest levels. President Schmidt, the candidates standing have completed the requirements of the university, and the faculty recommends them to you for the bachelor's degree in their respective fields of business and management. In accordance with the laws of the State of New York upon the recommendation of the faculty with the approval of the Board of Trustees and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, I proudly admit each of you to the bachelor's degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. We congratulate you and extend our sincere best wishes. Hisham Abarka. Thomas Apostolico. Lubna Ismail. Jody Lee. Xingjian Diao. Wu Sun Lin. Amish Soni. Jessica Worms. Ananya Yadav. Brooke Zaleke. Chen Shi Zhou. Victory Chizu Rumoloke Arun Abraham. Abukar. Jack Thomas Harrison Agnew. John Beaton. Megan Byram. Jack Brackett. Thomas Cassell. Magdalena Erbanova. Ilan Chai. Rongyan Zhu. Nihil Christian. Matthew Chapman. Eileen Shan. Augustus Cruz. Dylan Davies. Carlos Davis. Reginald Durden. Nicholas Angelo Gagliardi. Jake Gagno. Alexander Garcia. Renny Glasgow. Nachiketa Gosukonda. Jack Green. Tristan Yerman Gay. Abel Hegos. Eric Johnson. Jaehyun Kim. Shinyong Kim. 
Angelica Leung. Jacob Lee. Brett Miller.